Hi, welcome to episode 84 of Pink's Picks Book Racks, commentary from a retired high school English teacher. Today's title, Mummet, a semi-autobiographical onomastic Bildungsroman novel is first generation Ghanaian Londoner Jessica George's debut. That is a lot to unpack in that intro, so I'll break it down for you. I'll start with the title and the titular character. In Chui, which is a dialect of a Niger-Congo language, Mame has many meanings, but in protagonist. Maddie's case, it means woman, and it suggests matriarch, a nickname that invites far more responsibility than Maddie wants. Because her spendthrift mother lives mostly in Ghana, Maddie is not only her father's primary caregiver, he has late stage Parkinson's, but also the family's primary breadwinner working at a job she hates. Though her adult experience at home is immense, her exposure to life in London is nearly non-existent. She longs to say yes to after-work drinks and explore the bewildering world of internet dating. When her mom returns from Ghana, Maddie decides to rent an apartment. When she finally abandons Mama and discovers Maddie, the hilarity and heartbreak begin. At one point, Maddie discusses with her therapist the importance of names in her culture, the link between our names and supposed destiny. Now, when an author gives a character a name where the meaning of that appellation reflects the character's personality, actions, or fate, the literary device employed is called onomastic imagery. I discussed this in episode 12 regarding Jhumpa Lahiri's novel, The Namesake, where protagonist Gogol Ganguly, like Maddie, feels repressed by his name. The most pervasive use of this device that I've encountered or taught is in two plays, Garcia Lorca's The House of Bernarda Alba, and Chekhov's Three Sisters, as well as in Marquez's novella, Chronicle of a Death Foretold. Maddie is 25 years old, which some of you may say is far too old to label this book Bildungsroman or Apprenticeship. Both terms are synonymous with coming of age. However, the genre designation has more to do with maturation or sophistication than it does with actual age. Think about Nick in The Great Gatsby. He had both served in World War II and graduated from Yale when we meet him, yet he didn't fully grow up or lose his naivete until after his awakening in West Egg. Maddie, like her creator, Jessica George, was born and raised in London to Ghanaian parents, studied English literature, worked at a literary agency and theater, also lost a father and was born in 1994. Maddie's friends were inspired by Jessica's, but other characters evolved entirely from the author's imagination, hence the categorization of semi autobiographical novel as opposed to memoir. Smart girl. Either she or her publisher learned from the debacle that was James Fry's A Million Little Pieces. So what do I love about Mame? I love George's style. Maddie's narrative is both interrupted by and augmented with technology text messages, emails, type lists, device notes, online newsletters, and online dating sites. She also includes author intrusion, which is speaking directly to the reader, and interior monologue, which she refers to as her subconscious self. 
I also love George's charming use of voice, achieved through diction, syntax, tone, and punctuation. I'm entertained and empathetic when Maddie wonders to herself if something is weird, then thinks, probably, but best to save further ruminations on that for when I can afford a therapist. And when tragedy strikes, she ponders, I haven't cried today, and remain awake for hours, wondering if this foreshadows oncoming sociopathic tendency. Jessica George is a talented young writer to watch. I give Mummy an A. Thank you for watching. If you like my class, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, don't forget to do your homework. Bye-bye.